Hello, I am vlogging. Why? Let's talk about my first week in grad school. I recently, just this past Monday, took my first class, and it seems like this week went by so fast. So I have class Monday to Thursday. Fridays were off, there are no classes. So Monday to Thursday, that's it. And then, you know, kind of a long weekend. Friday to Sunday or whatever. But I wanted to explain, talk about what I did, how classes went, how did I feel, do I feel overwhelmed yet, or like, psh, it's not even going to be a problem. So I'll talk about that more. I want to kind of have a short disclaimer that I didn't really organize pl or plan out this video at all. <laughs> so gonna be a little bit furry form I hope it <laughs> goes through smoothly and I cover everything we will see what happens so you may notice me looking down a lot back and forth between the camera and my desk it's because I did write down some topics that I wanted to cover there's a reason that I'm looking down I was just thinking about things that I want to, and I want to share my experience during the program that I do know, but I'm not sure yet how I want to do it. You know, I want to do weekly videos at the end of every week I, I vlog or do them by topic. So I have separate videos depending on the topic that they're covering. I'm not sure how I want to go about it. How I want to organize organize these videos but I do want to talk about my experience here in this master's program so they may be weekly maybe I'll tackle them over the weekend you know set up the camera do a little signing talk about the week before maybe but this week I'm going to talk about my first week in school Jesus it's a lot of reading, a lot of reading, a lot of reading, so much. <laughs> Understand, I, I work full time, 40 hours a week, every week, I'm at work, doing it, and then I go to school, and then I have night classes. So my schedule right now, it's a little bit adjusted for school. Most days I have the same schedule, they're just a little bit shifted earlier in the day so Monday Wednesday and Thursday yeah Monday Wednesday Thursday I work 8 30 to 4 30 and Tuesday well every Tuesday I work 7 to 1 so that's kind of it's really early in the day and then class here I'll show you my schedule you can see here So I printed out my schedule just so that it's easy. I can open my binder, see what class I have that day and what time. So Monday I have class five to seven fifty. And that's the same Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And then Tuesdays I have class from two to four fifty. So it's an earlier class, not really a night class. But my boss, we talked about it before I, I got into the program about me leaving work early on Tuesdays, but we had a discussion. We decided how things were gonna work with my work and with school work and the workload and all that. So he was cool about it. He's a really cool dude. Should be fine. So because I'm working 40 hours a week and then going to school and taking class, I have to also consider projects, group projects or individual projects homework, you know, all these other things that are included in school, not just class. So really it's, I'm exhausted. I'm so tired. I wake up early in the morning to go to work. Then I hop in my car, <clears throat> drive to class. Well, let me give you some background information. So my original plan, I thought I was going to drive to work, 
hop on my bike, drive or bike to class, and then bike back to work, drive home. But that plans out the window. I would be exhausted biking every day, bike to school, and then bike back to work, and then hop in my car, drive home. It, it just is not going to work. It's just too much. So I'm just going to drive straight through, hop in my car, and drive. Simple, clean, and easy. Less stress. So, I'm really exhausted. I'm working all day, and I'm hopping in my car, going to school, take class all night. It's just so much, because you really have to pay attention. It's like I'm prying my eyes open. And my classmate, and I was telling him, I noticed that I'm kind of falling asleep in class, having a hard time keeping my eyes open, and one of the guys... He's a recent Gallaudet graduate. He got his bachelor's degree there. And he said, I think he may have been there for like three years or so. So he has some Gallaudet experience. But he said, you know, I really think it's the language because you have to be so focused. You have to keep your eyes open, follow the teacher. You have to rely on your eyes. And it makes you tired. Even if it's not like you're not tired, really. It's just a different, it's just a different modality. You're not using your ears so you can do other things. You can take notes and just rely on your ears. You have to always have your eyes open or you'll miss information. It's a lot, it entails a lot of focus. Your eyes are doing a lot of work. Trying to understand, trying to follow what they're saying. So yeah, I I noticed that I'm exhausted because I'm working and my eyes are super dry and I'm tired because I'm just having to basically pry them open all night for three hours during class trying to catch what the teacher is saying. Basically, I'm exhausted. I haven't yet a few, I think maybe two classes i've done some readings for them some readings yeah but i haven't really started getting deep into the weeds of it of you know just reading tons of pages every day no just two classes the teachers they gave us some assignments oh, aren't too bad not a lot i think maybe well one of the classes my thursday class gave us homework the week before the first class and I'm like uh we're not even in school yet <laughs> but we have homework for your class so that was a little weird and the Monday so the Monday before that class I read everything and I was ready for Thursday thank god I read everything and we were able to have our in-class discussion and related to the topic in the book and all that so there was that that reading and then Wednesday's class it was just a short, short chapter. It was really not a lot. It was like 30 pages of reading. So I did that before class as well. And we had in class discussion about the what the book discussed. One of them, I was already familiar with a lot of the information. The other one was a lot of new information, so a little more dense. But I really haven't, like, rolled up my sleeves and, like, I'm studying all the time. I'm reading all the time. I haven't done any of that yet. But I think that next week, all of that will change. And I'll be doing a lot more, a lot more homework. I'm a little bit nervous about it. I'm going to manage my time. But I want to back up a little bit and explain what my classes are. I know, I'm going all over the place, but I warned you, I didn't plan this. I don't have a list. I don't have a plan for this video. I'm sorry, but I did warn you. Oh, so, yeah, off topic again. I have this picture. I printed it a while ago. It's from my uh, under our program. I'm a graphic designer. Graphic designer. And... So I printed this for a project, like a video project or something that we did. But I printed this because I put it in my binder and I just absolutely love it. 
And it's in my binder, in the front of my binder. And I call it my life on grad school. I think it's hilarious because really everything is like, oh my God, what am I going to do? What's happening? I'm so busy. I got all this work. I just feel like my life's on fire. <laughs> I really identify with this picture. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. So my classes, I have a total of four. So Monday is history of interpreting. Tuesday is dis discourse analysis. Wednesday is structure of language. And then Thursday is fundamentals of interpreting. So those are my four classes that I'm taking now. And this program it has four semesters. So really five, but that's a summer class. So four semesters. And each class, each semester has four classes except the last one, which might have three. And then really the fifth one is just a summer internship. So one class for that. But then four, four, three, I think. Or it might be the last two semesters I have three classes. I'm not sure. I got to check again. But this year I'll have four classes each semester. Oh, so my teachers. Maybe you're thinking about enrolling in the program or applying you know they didn't have the same teachers every year so I figured I'd give you their names and maybe you know who they are or you've met them maybe you've seen a video with them in it I think it's valuable information so I will share it with you so Monday the history I'm interpreting is run by Lori, why not? Yes, why not? Her last name. Super interesting. And it actually sounds like the words, why not? Like, that's it. Why not? So, that was cool. <laughs> Tuesday, Discourse Analysis for Interpreters is with Emily Shaw. I think her sign name is the E on the chin. You tap in the chin. I think that's it. Emily Shaw. Wednesday's class, Structure of Language, is Structure of Language. And his teacher's name is Patrick. Last name... He's from Canada, so his last name is French. I think it's Boudreaux or something like that. I don't know. I know I spelled that wrong. It's, uh, But I know his last name is something like that. Patrick Boudreaux, I think. And then my last class is every Thursday. Fundamentals of Interpreting. Fundamentals of Interpreting. And that's run by Dr. Danny. Full name is Dan Danielle Hunt. Actually, I'm not sure if the other teachers are doctors, too. I know... Maybe, doc maybe Dr. Shaw. I don't think Lori's... A oh, wait, no, no, no. Yeah. Dr. Lori Wynette, she's definitely a doctor. Maybe all. I think they might all be doctors. Patrick, Lori, Emily, Danny, they're all doctors. Before I got into the program, I was a little nervous, a little concerned that I'd be in class, and ready, ready to learn. My teachers would get up, start their lecture, and I'd be like, what's going on? What did they say? I don't understand what's going on. It's not clear. But honestly, seriously, guys, it's fine. Before I, I, I started, I surveyed a few people who have had experience with the program. I asked them, you know, are they going to teach in sign language? Are they going to teach in English? 
were you able to understand them? Like when you were a new student, just got into the program, how did things go? And they were like, no, seriously, it's don't worry. It's really not a big deal. You will understand them, I promise. And I took all four of my classes this week and it was fun. And just like they said, it was honestly, I was so, so worried. I'm like, how will I understand them? Really, just, it's going to be fun. All of them, except one, are non-deaf. They're hearing, as we call them. And then I have one deaf teacher, and he teaches the structure of language. They tend to lean on the English side of the sign spectrum. So they can be more Englishy with their sign. Um, Patrick... The deaf, the um, teacher who's deaf, he has a mix. Sometimes he's like oh, strong ASL, and you're just like, wow. But then he'll sign things like he and she. He'll spell he and she, and I'm like, that's not an ASL sign. It doesn't exist in ASL. But you know, he he has a mix of signs. He tends to be more like deaf sign. His hands are flying, and I'm like, what is going on? His class is really the only one where I found his style. Maybe a little harder for me to understand during class, but the other ones is really not a big deal. I follow them perfectly. It's just that deaf guy. He's whew, his sign. I'm just like, yeah, what? And he said, oh, you know, I forgot to mention if you don't understand what I'm saying, what I'm signing, please let me know. I'll clarify. You know, I'll, I'll sign it slower, whatever you need. I want to match you guys, your learning styles. And I'm just like, well, if that's the case, oh, we're going to be here all day. Me asking you to clarify things every five minutes. And every minute I'm going to be like, hey, can you sign that again? I didn't catch that. <laughs> It'll definitely be an all day thing, all through class. So I just kind of <laughs> suffered through it. <laughs> I assume that everyone else could understand, but then later I found out that that wasn't the case. <laughs> there were a few people who were just as lost as I was at times. So like I, I have finished mentioning, there's a lot of reading and that's my number one concern, how I'm gonna manage my schedule to fit all of it in to have time to read everything you know when am I gonna do it I get up at I'll have to get up at like six in the morning I have an hour or two to read before work and I go to work 8 30 to 4 30 and head to school class 5 to 7 50 and then after that 7.50 onward, I guess, study time, reading time, filming videos. I already know it's going to be a lot of videos to film. And it's the norm of our program. It's not like we're going to write a bunch of papers. Oh, that was the sign for rain. Sorry. So then we're going to write a bunch of papers. At least not everything will be written. There's going to be a lot of filming to replace that. So we do things in ASL. And I've already had experience where you're signing something and you mess up. You got to start over. This is a lot of like, ugh. I fucked up. Let me start that over. It was super annoying. So I already know that's gonna take up suck up a lot of my time. It definitely will. I already know it. I'm gonna have to seriously sit down, look at my schedule, and say, okay. I'll make sure that my responsibilities for work are taken care of. Everything is done there. Then focus on schoolwork. Let's see, okay, what's due next week? What do I have to do? What's important? Get it down to a system where I'm able to say, not last week, but a week out, be able to look at my agenda, plan everything, make sure that everything will get done so that I have time to do them and I'm not rushing through projects and work and you know just typing up messy papers, things that aren't clear. Just to really be, really dedicate myself to finding the time to do things, not be distracted. 
Next, I think that maybe... Okay, so recording videos are... It's a unique situation. They require silence. They require complete silence. We can't be interrupted. The background of what I'm filming has to be free of clutter, no pets running around in the background or thing. Just me sitting in a chair, signing, you know, my assignment as formally as possible. Cool. Because of that, videos require a lot of time. So if I'm home and I'm living with my partner, if I'm home and you know, he shouts, hey, Shannon, la, 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 la. and maybe I'm in another room or something, and he shouts out while I'm recording, then I'll have to start over. You know, or I react to it and sign something wrong, and then I have to start over. And it's happened a few times already, so it's kind of annoying, but I know that I'm going to have to start again. I'll have to say, you know, what do you want? and then start the video up again. So it'll be something that I have to manage. And maybe one of the reasons why I may have to stay at school be um, to finish my assignments and then head home to have social time. I'll have to coordinate my schedule so that I have time to with my partner, time to interact with my classmates, time to do schoolwork, Work, work. It's a lot of things to coordinate and plan out. So time management is going to be super important. A lot of things, homework and everything, I'll have to, you know, keep track of a lot of things. You know what I'm doing. Be able to plot and plan them all in my agenda or whatever. So I'll show you what it looks like. So my original plan was I was just going to use Google Calendar. No big deal. I've been using it thus far and it's worked, so why, why change? Why switch it up? But there's too much happening, so there are events deadlines that are related to the program itself, not necessarily schoolwork. So I'll put them in my Google, and I'm sorry, this is my sign for Google, Google Calendar. So I plotted them in, in the calendar and everything it was fine, but I like to keep my homework separate from other school-related events. That way I can look and see just take one look and see what's due that week or next week and not have like a bunch of things that I have to kind of scroll through and figure out, okay, well, that's not important. You know, that's, that's program related, like the deadline for business registration or something like that. Not important. I'm looking for school, schoolwork, homework. So I didn't really feel like parsing through all the information in my calendar. I decided to have an agenda. You know, a paper calendar, going old school, an actual book that I can hold in my hand and look at, but I'm cheap. So, I made my own. And this is what it looks like. It was a little awkward holding this. Hold on, my in frame. My camera's showing me flipped, so anyway. You can see the month over here, We're in September. And the colors represent my classes. We have orange for history of interpreting. Pink for, what is pink for? I think fundamentals of language. That's pink, yeah. Blue for um, discourse analysis. 
I have discourse analysis. And then green is for structure of language. I think that's what it is. It's full name. Structure of language for, <coughs> structure of language for interpreters. I think it's its full name. So I've put in all, plotted all of my assignments in here. So this column here is just showing what's due that week. What has to be finished before class that week. And I inserted that here. And if you can see, I hold it a little closer. In those little boxes. If I finish an assignment, then I just check it off. That way I know that I don't have to worry about it anymore. It's it's done. I don't have to be like, oh, did, did I finish that yet? It'll be checked off. And then you can see here, we have the month of October, and there are, there are four months. So September through December. And I think class is in like the second or third week of December. I don't remember which one, second or third, but pretty much mid-December. I think the 14th around the 14th of December will be the last day of classes. So I input everything in my schedule uh, from the syllabus and the teachers made it very clear that the syllabus is stupid and important. I have to make sure that I read everything in the syllabus, that I have any questions, I can ask them now and not wait until things are due and I'm like, kind of caught with my pants down because the teachers aren't going to remind us about assignments or projects when things are due that day it's solely our responsibility to make sure that we get everything done that needs to be done so the syllabus or the syllabi I guess that's how you say it I read all of them put everything in my calendar and now I just have to <laughs> keep up. Some of the things listed in the syllabus, they subject could change, of course, but I, at least now I have like a basic foundation of sorts. I also wanted to talk about my notes. So I'll show you what my notes look like. I'm using uh, Corn the Cornell method for my notes this semester. You can see here this first column represents the topic or kind of a summary of what's in this second column, which are the actual notes. And then this third column I have page numbers, com comments about something that you know may have struck me as interesting or maybe if I have questions related to that I want to pose them during our in-class discussions, things like that. They get placed in this third column here. Then I have the the book chapter up here, and the date, the class name, my name. And I have some sticky notes here. It's easier if, if Later, I said, oh, you know, I forgot something. I want to add something that came up during an in-class discussion. It'll be easier to place them on sticky notes here. And then I can add them later, just at the bottom or wherever in my notes. So the program actually bans laptops. You can't type your notes during class. You have to, you know, write them. Pen and paper, no laptops. Honestly, I was a little bit disappointed about that. I bought my laptop specifically for this program because I didn't have one before now, and it was kind of a waste of money at this point, but yeah, oh well. And it's hard trying to pay attention and catch everything while you're writing come on now it's definitely not going to end up in a straight line it's just going to be 
all types of electrical, a whole mess. So the struggle is real. I might write, well, I'll show you an example. I, during the readings, I take notes before class. That way I have everything that I need by the time I get to class and I can participate in the class discussions. But I think I might, moving forward, maybe type my notes. So I'll write them first and then type whatever print it out and put that in my binder. Uh, I'll have to see how that goes if <laughs> I actually feel like copying all of my notes because it'll be like doing it twice. I'll have to write them and then I'll have to type whatever. Mm, I don't know how much work that's going to be, so we'll see. And I can show you what my type notes look like too. Oh, well, before I do that, I'll show you my uh, example of my in-class notes. So this semester, I think I'm going to try and utilize mind mapping more. I think it may be easier to kind of plot all my thoughts and ideas down without having to write on a straight line. That way I can just, it's more like a free form style of note taking. So my type notes look like this. And again, I'm using the Cornell method. So you can see my first column, the topic, second column, my notes, and third column comments that I have about whatever, page numbers, things like that. Class, date, yeah. For that, I just wrote my notes and then I typed them and printed them out. If you're interested in more information related to like note taking or how to organize your binder, how you should divide everything. I suggest a you watch a YouTube video. Well, it's a channel, and it's by a woman named. Uh, it's called Mar Mariana's Study Corner, and oh my God, she's I freaking love that channel. It's so amazing, so so amazing. Her handwriting is impeccable. I'm just like, are you serious? How do you do that? I just, it's so amazing, so amazing. So I highly rec uh, highly suggest, recommend that YouTube channel. It will definitely help you if you're interested in that sort of thing. And I'll leave the link below to her channel if you're into that. But I think that's all. I still have to decide if I'm gonna do weekly vlogs, you know, talk about what happened that week, or divide my videos by topic. So I'll talk about a certain issue in that video. I haven't decided yet, so I guess, I don't know, I'll let you know. Bye.